Schwab Asset Management is proud to support the Inside ETFs podcast. As one of the nation's largest ETF providers, Schwab Asset Management offers insights and perspectives that can help advisors build on their ETF expertise. Did you know that more millennials are choosing ETFs as their investment vehicle of choice, or that many investors plan to increase their allocation to fixed income, smart beta, and actively managed ETFs? Find out how ETFs can support your clients' goals with Schwab Asset Management's educational resources. Learn more at schwabassetmanagement.com forward slash ETF know-how. Hello and welcome to Inside ETFs, the podcast where we bring the latest and greatest ETF industry perspectives directly to you through in-depth conversations with key thought leaders from across the ETF ecosystem. I'm your host, Douglas Jonas, the head of exchange traded products at the New York Stock Exchange, the home of ETFs. Now, today I'm joined by Brian Kellerer. He's the Chief Revenue Officer at Simplify Asset Management. Now, Simplify may be a new ETF company. However, their leadership team and founders have decades of experience in the ETF industry. They're highly accessible, and they're committed to helping advisors with their asset allocation process via their timely content, as well as the tools that are available on the Simplify website and the Simplify Advisor Hub. Brian, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Douglas. So let's kind of start at the beginning, if you don't mind. You know, could you tell us a little bit, how did you get into the ETF business? And when you sort of look back on your career, were there things, was there an event? Is there something that you would say, like, this was a pivotal point that sort of led me to where I am today? Yeah, absolutely. I spent the first chunk of my career on the traditional asset management side. So doing mutual funds and separately managed accounts and other strategies. And what I found is within my PA, I was using some of those strategies, but when it came time to step outside of that organization, I was using ETFs because I would you know, do mutual fund research and the idea of paying four and a quarter, four and a half in upfront sales charges uh, as a retail investor was suboptimal. So as I was kind of using them, you, you do this natural comparison of, okay, well, you've got ETFs, they're fully transparent, they're tradable intraday, you can see it all on screen, they're, they're cheaper, style purity was a thing back then, tax efficient. You have all these reasons that ETFs made sense. So in my, in my day-to-day interaction, um, I was starting to come up against ETFs a little bit more and, and, and candidly you know, started to lose a little, little bit of conviction uh, about the mutual fund structure. So the company I was with was in the process of getting sold and I was finishing up my MBA. So it was kind of a natural transition point for me. And, uh, and after a couple of spots, I ended up uh, joining PIMCO, which was just a phenomenal opportunity. And that really brought me to, to where I am today for two reasons. I mean, there's you know, that kind of organic interest in ETFs and wanting to focus full-time on ETFs. And then after joining PIMCO, it, it, the ETF business when I joined was, was very small. It was a small group. So we had a lot of autonomy. And you know, PIMCO by nature back then was a pretty entrepreneurial spot and you know, was able to really get well embedded into the ETF ecosystem, which as you know, is, you know, it's, it's growing, it's large on paper, but it still has this kind of very small feel to it. There's a, it's certainly like a, a co-opetition of sorts where people tend to, to play pretty nice, even when they're in direct competition, but it you know, was able to, to, to build some great contacts within the industry. And at the same time, um, got to know Paul Kim, uh, Paul, who's co-founder and CEO of Simplify, good personal friend of mine at PIMCO, he was focused on the ETF platform. He was instrumental in building that. And um, you know, I was focused on the client side. He was focused on the product side. And um, you know, eventually that led us to Simplify. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought Paul up, right? I mean, you know, co-founder, but but I've known Paul and and both of you really for a long time. And it's funny, we're all kind of in the same boat of, I think we all started in ETFs with this intellectual curiosity of, this just seems better. And and boy, the more I dig in here, the more I like it, and the more exciting it is, and 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 the more you know opportunity there are for investors, and the you know it, it just kept going, and until we sort of ended up in this ETF career, and here you are at Simplify. Uh, you've got a title, Chief Revenue Officer, which I see popping up more and more on LinkedIn. So clearly it's growing. But is there something you would say for the advisors listening that maybe somebody would be either surprised or interested to learn about your role at Simplify? Yeah, the Chief Revenue Officer is definitely something that's been co-opted from, from the tech side. 
Uh, it's just a fancy way of saying that I focus on sales and marketing. <laughs> And I work on all, all aspects of, of you know, client-facing as- activities from prospecting all the way to servicing and, and part of a, a really phenomenal team, up to seven individuals now. And so we've got some great partners on the marketing side, so doing everything from marketing and sales. And it's as a new issuer, it's been really fun to, to try out different things on, on the sales and marketing side. And you know, when you're at a big organization, you're really limited with what you can do, right? There's, there's, there's you know, existing assets, there's brand reputation at risk, and we can, we can push things a little bit. We like to have a little bit of fun. So new media, social media has been great for us. Twitter, the whole FinTwit space where you've got a phenomenal amount of, of free information that's shared, ideas that are shared. Of course, you know, there's, there's, there's trolls out there as well, but for the most part, it's a, it's a pretty supportive community and you can have some really good dialogue out there. Um, it helps for simplify with brand, brand recognition, you know, having some of our thought leaders like Paul, like Michael Green, like Harley Bassman out there posting their thoughts in the world. Then also like LinkedIn. LinkedIn has been great for us. And you know, new company being able to put out our content on there, you know, reach out to individuals directly. And on the content side, having you know, Paul, Mike, Harley, Dave Burns, who's our uh, co-founder and CIO, we have so many different things that we can put out there. You can be found on our website. There's webinars, podcasts that we have. Our Keeping It Simple has garnered a sizable audience. That's featuring Mike and Harley. And then you know those guys and are always out there on different platforms um, and doing things like this with, with New York Stock Exchange. You guys have been tremendously supportive. And so we really appreciate it. But beyond kind of you know my role in, in sales and marketing as a startup, one of the great things, you just get to wear so many hats, right? Uh, in a big organization, you've got, you've got a role and as entrepreneurial as it is, you got to focus on that role. And from for here, it's, it's great to be part of the conversations on everything from funding to product development, to partnerships, and, and even, you know, even less glamorous things like, you know, now that we're going back to some in-person meetings, it's like, oh, wait a second, I don't just submit a pitch deck to get printed out. I actually have to run and, you know, get, get some some you know, nice paper and stock and print it out. And um, so it really has been fun to, to take this from, from zero to where we are now and uh, wearing a lot of hats. Yeah, I want to talk a bit about that because, you know, for me, I think of Simplify and I, I think of ideas. And, you know, if I take us back in time, I remember, uh, you know, this was maybe three years ago. Paul had come into the New York Stock Exchange. Many people don't realize this hidden known fact. Uh, we have our own restaurant at the New York Stock Exchange. And he had come in for breakfast and he said, Doug, I've got some really great ideas and I've got some really smart partners and I'll be back in touch. But but I've got something big brewing and, and it's going to be super exciting. And, and you could just see it in, in, in his face like th- this was going to be big. Here we are. And it is big. With Simplify, you know, could you take us through the launch of the business and how you guys sort of think about the the, the ETFs that you that you build and run? Absolutely, and 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 Paul left uh, Pimco after Bill Gross left. Soon after Bill Gross left, he went over to Principal and built out their ETF business. And yeah, there's there's a couple things that were the real catalyst for this. Um, you know, part of it is is again kind of being in a large organization and you know having limits on, on, on what you can do as far as you know how you want to innovate. And then for the industry, the ETF rule and derivative rule were, were really key in, in kind of the establishment of Simplify. ETF rule made it easier and more streamlined for you know, new issuers to begin to launch an ETF platform and then to launch ETFs in general. And then the derivative rule uh, streamlined derivative usage in 40 Act in the 40 act structure, which for, for ETFs and all of our, our strategies are 40 act, that was really relevant for us. So Paul had the idea approached Dave Burns and myself about, about building this and, you know, kind of laid out the vision and it was like, man, this, this makes a ton of sense. And, you know, you know, Paul's thought that, you know, if, if someone's going to build this and let's build a team and let's see if we can do it. And it's, um, since, since we've done it, haven't really, re- haven't regretted it since. And then Paul and Dave, formally established the firm February 2020. Think back to what was going on in February 2020. It seems like a suboptimal time to launch uh, a new company, but it actually has been really beneficial for Simplify because that was right before the, the COVID lockdowns. So, you know, 
they got to work building those strategies during all that market volatility, people began to think about tail risk in a really a genuine, organic way because they were experiencing it. So, you know, the idea of building a platform that that focused heavily on on tail tail risk protection and mitigation was something that resonated with a lot of individuals. So we launched a platform in September 2020. We're up to 21 strategies, 1.4 billion under management. I would say the, the most important part of that is the talented individuals that were brought on along the way. So bringing on someone like Harley Bassman, who was actually you know, retired at the time, he came on to simplify. Michael Green, you know, there's no way that in kind of the, the pre-COVID world, we can convince you know, either of them, both of whom are based in California now that, okay, well, you're going to move back to Manhattan and come into the office every day. That just doesn't happen. So we're up to about 22 individuals now and a really tight knit, talented group of individuals. So, so let's talk more about the ETFs themselves, right? Because you, you've got both the experience, but also the ETFs that really kind of lean in and are designed for advisors. And, you know, if, if you're an advisor listening in, and, and if that's the case, how should they be thinking about Simplify? How do they engage with your team to, to discuss ideas, to learn, to, to, to frankly just sort of get a good feel for the types of ETFs that you guys are building? Yeah. I mean, find our website, simplify.us. Um, it's, a, it's a treasure trove of information about our products. But, but most importantly, it's, it's focused on, uh, we have the product information, but the our blog posts, our case studies, our advisor tools really highlight on why Simplify exists, really highlight why the strategies that we have in place, why we, we launched them. They, they really seek to fill a real need for advisors. Um, so kind of understanding that context is really, really important. Um, and then you know that team of individuals that um, we, our focus is advisors. So we want to, to work with advisors and, and, and help them create portfolios where their clients can really stick to that long-term plan that those advisors are creating for them. So Brian, uh, you mentioned the word risk and um, you know, here we are, uh, it's been nothing but a, I think a challenging 2022. If you sort of look out at the marketplace, you know, what do you think the biggest challenges are right now and how should advisors, how should investors be managing their risk? Yeah, the biggest challenge, I mean, We've grown up in this industry, you know, believing that that bonds and and stocks are supposed to act different from one another. So when when stocks sell off, bonds are supposed to rally. And you know, you've seen this massive positive correlation between bonds and equities this year. That both sold off dramatically. So I mean, and people have been calling out flaws in the 60-40 model for a while, and and the majority of assets really are still in there. And so we're we're, we're seeing that hurt individuals, individual investors in a real way. And, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, my parents, my parents are, my father's 80 this year, retired, certainly not going back to work. And, you know, it's, it's painful for people who are retired and looking at their portfolios to see it down 20% and not sure what to do, right? So the, the products that we've built, the suite of strategies that we've built, again, is really focused on, on helping clients, helping advisors get their clients to stick to their long-term plans. You know, the, the good news about the current environment is that for longer-term focused individuals, there, there's, there's income now, right? There's, there's yield back in bonds. You know, there's potentially good entry point in equities. So there are opportunities out there, but really having that long-term plan, working with advisors is critical. So, Brian, I want to dig even deeper, right? Because when you go to the website and you start to learn and, and you see some of these, these different strategies, your ETFs cover everything from convexity, uh, hedging against rising rates, and uh, you even got uh, c- cover volatility risk premiums. Could, could you share more of your thoughts on how advisors should be generally thinking about the building blocks of their clients' portfolios? Yeah, absolutely. And and. For better or worse, most advisors have moved into more of a, a uh, management of client assets through models. So you streamline it, you, you, you look at portfolios through the context of risk. Uh, but it, it, it's really important to, I think that's, I think net net, that's a, that's a huge positive for advisors and their clients. But it's really important to understand some of the idiosyncratic risks in client portfolios and, and really focus on their financial needs. So 
as we've built out the platform, that's what we've we've really tried to do. Okay, what is the problem that you know, this advisor has with this type of client? Is it income needs? You know, does does this does this advisory team have a client base that is mostly retired and, and need to hit specific income levels? So that's a suite of strategies that we have. Challenges with you know that 60-40 having a portfolio of only equity and bonds. How do you introduce true diversification to portfolios beyond that? That's another area that we've really focused on. Perfect example of that is some of the work we've done around that equity plus convexity suite. So how do you take your core equity exposure and, and layer on real tail risk protection through the through the, the form of protective protective put portfolio? And then, you know, in this interest rate environment. This interest rate environment, where you've you've had such volatility and such a sell-off in in in, uh, in rates, our interest rate PFIX, uh, our interest rate hedge strategy that was developed by Harley Bassman, you know, he wasn't necessarily calling for a sell-off in bonds, but what he did notice was retired individuals just had a huge exposure to rates, right? And if you were to have a scenario where you had fixed income sell off, you know, that hard duration sell off, a lot of investors were going to be really hurt. So how do you protect portfolios against that and still get income? And that's why we developed that strategy. And then looking for different types of income. So you mentioned the, 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 uh, the volatility premium ETF, SVOL. That's a great way of, you know, it's a non-traditional way to provide income. What it does is it, it you know, quarter of the portfolio rolls down the front end of the VIX futures curve. And then we have um, some different types of, uh, of blow-up protection that's built into the management of that. So, you know, we're not looking to completely throw away the traditional asset allocation models. We're not saying that, you know, the, the 60-40 model is completely broken. You know, the majority of risk in, in, in people's portfolios it probably should continue to be bonds and equity, but supplementing those with different types of tail protection, different sources of in, income, and, and different you know, types of exposures that offer diversification beyond equity and, and rates is really important. So, you know, I, I was going back to your story here about, you know, Paul and team sort of sitting there in the middle of the beginning of COVID and saying, no, 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 we see an opportunity. So clearly they're looking at these markets. Uh, are there opportunities now? Are, are you know, are, are there ETFs that, that you think, hey, these ETFs can help you seize those opportunities? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and the other thing that we've tried to do is, is we definitely want to try and create a tool set for you know long-term investors. With that said, though, you know the the, tool, the toolkit we have definitely has some some interesting ETFs that that can be used opportunity opportunistically. PFIX, for example, if you think you know rates are going to continue to be volatile, if if rates are going to you know continue to move up, having that as that interest rate hedge is is a huge opportunity. If you want to take the other side of it, TYA is a really efficient portfolio tool for for getting exposure to um, to rates. So it's a essentially it's a it's duration matched to the 20 year plus bond index, but it's focused on the 10 year. So focused on improving the the pickup and carry through through the, the 10 year US Treasury. I mean our view is that market opportunities like this, when you have periods of of volatility in markets, you know for longer term investors, this is these this might be a, a decent entry point. So longer term, what we're trying to do is provide investors with an opportunity to get exposures that really have, have been typically offered through you know, much higher priced, harder to access hedge funds and structured products. We're trying to create this full robust platform and you know we're excited to bring these exposure in a in a you know truly cost effective, fully transparent exchange traded fund. So Brian, you've got a, a nice lineup of ETFs. You, you're you're at over a billion in AUM. Is there an ETF in your lineup that you you look at and you say this thing should be going gangbusters? You know, I, I like people need to know about this ETF. Yeah, it's 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 kind of hard. It's like picking your favorite child, and then you know each day you have you know, at least me personally have a, have a different favorite. But you know, and, and maybe this one's not fair because it is it is so new and it only listed in February, but. Yeah, I'm going to make the call that AGGH, AGH, is it might be the new bond king. What it is, it's it provides a diversified core bond exposure, and 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 it seeks to mitigate some of the biggest risks within 
bond investing and, and what are those risks potential for rising rates so you know uh, a sell off in us treasuries like we're seeing now and the other thing which we've started to see but haven't seen it in a huge way is is credit spread widening you know one of the things that a lot of investors you know may not fully appreciate is you know, that that diversified core bond exposure the the percentage to credit has really creeped up over the last decade so we've got a a, a credit hedge in there that uh, that helps offset you know some of the volatility you know that you might see in credit if you were to see credit spreads rotten. So uh, AGGH is uh, is my my current favorite child of the day, and I think they definitely deserve some more attention. There you go, and and quite possibly you heard it here first. Uh, the new king of the fixed income lineup, uh, Brian. For advisors, investors, they're listening in, and and they're gone to your your website. Is there a kind of best practice? How should they be coming to you? How do they come and engage with your team, with the Simplify team? Well, the, the the best way to engage with us, obviously, is is utilizing our ETFs. But there's, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you, our website just has a, a, a phenomenal amount of, of great information, blog posts, case studies, keeping up with us, subscribe to our newsletter. We'll, we'll keep you updated on new products, you know, different, different case studies, blog posts, our new thought leadership, whatever's going on currently. And then... Um, the other way I would say is this is relatively new, but we we launched some some model portfolios to help give advisors a better sense of how to use our strategies. And this is something that you know, we had in the we had in the back of our heads, you know, as we launched the platform and just saw the growth of model portfolios. Something we intended to do, but definitely expedited it because we did see we have seen organic demand. Um, from advisors, you know, as they you know look at our content, understand kind of the risks that we're looking to solve for, and saying really like the way you guys are thinking, love to see kind of a a a a full portfolio that aligns with you know the the tail risks that you guys are looking to mitigate, different things like that. So that's available. Those are available uh, on our website. We've got you know four different models, essentially. Um, conservative, moderate, aggressive, and then an income strategy. So these are available on our website, but we're also in some some late discussions, late stage discussions with a couple platforms to offer these directly to advisors and you know, allow them to, to plug directly in for efficiency. And then, you know, I mentioned keeping it simple with Simplify, which is the webinar and podcast that we do with Mike Green and Harley Bassman. The lineup and guests that we've gotten on this podcast is really phenomenal. It's just a really fun, engaging conversation. Harley and Mike disagree on a lot of things, and that just makes for a really entertaining discussion. And um, so if you've missed some of those, you haven't you haven't tuned into those, those are available on YouTube. They're available on you know whatever your preferred podcast platform is. But um, lots of different ways to engage with us and uh, kind of pick and choose the way that, that you prefer to be to see Simplify. I love it. Keeping it Simplify with Simplify ETFs. Of course, you can find more about the Simplify lineup on their website, simplify.us, or of course, Google Simplify ETFs, you'll find them. That is a wrap on this edition of the Inside ETFs podcast. As a reminder, you can find this episode as well as many other episodes of the podcast on the New York Stock Exchange's website, homeofetfs.com. Thank you, Brian, so much for being here to share your insights. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes featuring thought leaders from across the ETF ecosystem. I'm Douglas Jonas, head of exchange traded funds at the New York Stock Exchange, the home of ETFs. Schwab Asset Management is proud to support the Inside ETFs podcast. As one of the nation's largest ETF providers, Schwab Asset Management offers insights and perspectives that can help advisors build on their ETF expertise. Did you know that more millennials are choosing ETFs as their investment vehicle of choice, or that many investors plan to increase their allocation to fixed income, smart beta, and actively managed ETFs? Find out how ETFs can support your clients' goals with Schwab Asset Management's educational resources. Learn more at schwabassetmanagement.com forward slash ETF know-how.